Are you ready for the next chapter in the Avatar universe? The cast of Avatar The Way of Water reveals the intense physical and emotional challenges they faced while filming. From underwater training to grueling motion capture sessions, these actors went through hell to bring this epic story to life. Get a sneak peek behind the scenes of the highly anticipated sequel, Avatar The Way of Water. Don't miss it! First up, the concept of wet-for-wet wet photography and its use in Avatar The Way of Water. James Cameron invented the wet for wet photography technique for his 2009 box office hit Avatar. Instead of recreating the effects in post-production with CGI, it entails shooting underwater scenes with the cast and crew submerged in water. Cameron's risk paid off because the method allowed him to accurately portray the subtleties of underwater movement, including the feel of the water on an actor's body and how things interact with their surroundings. The actors were able to interact with their underwater surroundings naturally. Wet for wet photography was essential to the success of the film Avatar, since it was the only way to portray the film's breathtaking images accurately. The movie had a global box office take of nearly $2.7 billion at its release, making it the highest grossing movie ever. Cameron later employed wet-for-wet wet filming in his 2017 documentary series Blue Planet 2 and Avatar prequels. Wet-for-wet wet photography is still one of the most creative and useful techniques for capturing underwater sceneries. Cameron's ability to use the technique so well is a credit to his technical prowess and vision. Next up, the benefits of using this technique as explained by Richie Bainham from Lightstorm Entertainment. For movies like Avatar The Way of Water, Richie Bainham from Lightstorm Entertainment discusses the advantages of wet-for-wet wet photography. Wet-for-wet wet photography offers a level of physical resistance that can influence an actor's performance and allow filmmakers to produce considerably more realistic water effects. Directors can better control the appearance and feel of their underwater scenes by immersing actors in tanks of water. Actors can add more realistic details and better inform their performances because of the physical resistance of shooting in a tank of water. Wet-for-wet wet photography also enables filmmakers to produce more intricate underwater images with different viscosity and movement. Directors can more effectively portray the feeling, tone, and atmosphere of an underwater scene by employing this technique without using CGI elements. Wet-for-wet wet photography enables more realistic and dynamic underwater pictures that can serve to improve a film's overall quality. Next, we have potential drawbacks associated with wet-for-wet wet photography. There are several advantages for wet-for-wet wet photography, but also some possible disadvantages. The expense of constructing and maintaining deep tanks and producing lifelike water effects is one of the biggest disadvantages. Wet-for-wet wet photography can also take a lot of time because it necessitates having performers immerse themselves in water for extended periods. Additionally, shooting in a tank may prevent some available moves in open water, which restricts the director's artistic options. Additionally, several safety considerations are related to wet-for-wet wet photography, such as managing pressure, temperature, and other environmental conditions. Last but not least, wet-for-wet wet photography can be especially difficult for nighttime sessions that call for artificial illumination. Wet-for-wet wet photography does, in the end, have advantages, but it's crucial to think about any potential disadvantages before utilizing this method. And now, now, compare wet for wet with dry for wet cinema used in recent years. Wet for wet and dry for wet cinematography have recently been combined to produce believable and exciting underwater scenes in movies like Aquaman and Avatar The Way of Water. James Cameron, a visionary director, has used wet for wet filmmaking, which makes use of actual water, in films like The Way of Water, which required an R&D budget to construct a tank that was 32 feet deep, could hold 90,000 gallons of water, and could imitate the right waves and currents. However, dry for wet filmmaking, used by directors like Ryan Coogler in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, substitutes visual effects for actual water. Wet for wet filmmaking offers an additional layer of realism to underwater action scenes while also allowing for greater creative license in producing magnificent pictures. Although both methods have advantages and disadvantages, Cameron's dedication to wet for wet has produced Avatar The Way of Water, a distinctive and unforgettable cinematic experience. Next is how Deborah Lynn Scott created costumes for the performance capture work. Deborah Lynn Scott designed The Way of Water's costumes, and the work that went into their creation was extensive. Scott served as the movie's costume designer. So that the costumes would look beautiful when they were being utilized for performance capture work, she made sure that each one took approximately 200 hours to make. Additionally, she created a great number of costumes made of white cloth that was worn underwater. For instance,
Since if a character wore a cape on land, Deborah Lynn Scott would fashion an identical cape out of white fabric for underwater scenes, actors could now move as if they were submerged in water without risking damaging their costumes. Even if they didn't have Tolkien buddies, some of the other characters in the movie nevertheless followed the tactile concept, a Pandoran whale. It was necessary to have divers dressed in performance capture suits jump into the pool and fill in whenever a whale was needed. This allowed actors to float with the whale or be flung off with a loud splash. The purpose of doing all this was to give participants an experience as realistic and tactile as humanly possible. Next, the 200-hour process to make each costume piece. Each costume takes a 200-hour process that is excruciatingly meticulous, labor-intensive, and calls for knowledge of costume design and construction. Deep comprehension of the characters, their actions, and the setting they occupy is the first step in the process. Costume designer Deborah Lynn Scott must consider every element of a character's movement, from the angle of their arms and legs to how their clothes react to water. The costume components are manually cut and put together after these specifics have been taken care of. High-end textiles with water resistance, such as leathers and silks, are the preferred choice. To ensure that the costumes have the proper closures and weights to allow the players to move freely in liquid, specialists must also be contacted. After being put together, components can then be further modified by being painted, dyed, or embellished in other ways. Before the outfit is prepared, any essential waterproof coatings must also be applied. The ultimate result is a suit that moves like a living creature in its watery habitat and looks genuine. Next, how real costumes were used to understand interactions between performance and costume. The costume team had to go above and beyond the usual standards to fully comprehend the relationships between the performance and costume in the film Way of Water. It took roughly 200 hours per item to create costumes specifically for use underwater. When Kiri waved her hand through a pot of banana peel fish things, or when Jake Sully and his Surak flew out of the water, the goal was to feel something physically solid. For the scenario to work, the outfits had to be convincing enough to convey the required weight and resistance. In addition, when a Pandoran whale was required, the dive team had to don performance capture suits and descend into the water. Actors like Britton Dalton, Loak, could float alongside or be launched off with a loud splash thanks to this. Way of Water benefited from an additional layer of realism provided by authentic costumes, which also helped to depict the relationships between performance and attire. This demonstrated the amount of work that went into creating a convincing and realistic underwater experience in the Way of Water. All of these components, from the costumes to the diving team, worked together to create an immersive setting that transported viewers to Pandora. This underlies why Way of Water is regarded as one of the best underwater movies ever filmed. Finally, a summary of the importance of using real costumes for realistic motion in movies like Way of Water. To provide viewers with an immersive and authentic experience, films like Way of Water must use real clothes for realistic motion. Costume designer Deborah Lynn Scott and her crew were able to include actual clothing in the underwater scenes by utilizing 3D and high frame rate photography. This made it possible for the players' movements to be directed and for their clothing, hair, and aquatic creatures to interact with each other and the audience. All of these factors worked together to provide a distinctive, authentic experience that will probably be recalled for years. Real clothes are a great method to keep viewers interested in the plot and the characters in underwater movies like Way of Water. Filmmakers can produce a distinctive and alluring experience that will stick in spectators' minds long after they have seen the movie by adding these clothes to the performances. Way of Water was able to provide spectators with an immersive and captivating experience that they will remember by using actual garments for realistic motion. Way of Water's success can be attributed to the production's careful attention to every last detail, which was crucial to the film's tactile concept. Take a look behind the scenes of Avatar The Way of Water, including the giant tank where James Cameron filmed much of the movie, the use of 3D post-conversion and its effect on the film. Filmmakers are using 3D post-conversion more and more often to give their films extra depth. However, critics and viewers have had varying opinions of this technique, with some believing leaving it takes away from the director's original work on the set. The underwater scenes in James Cameron's The Way of Water were improved using 3D post-conversion, giving viewers an immersive experience. While some thought this improved the movie, others thought it needed to be more intrusive and unneeded. Ultimately, the director's vision and the artistic choices made on site will determine whether or not 3D post-conversion is advantageous to a film. Therefore, when selecting
selecting whether or not to employ this strategy, it is crucial to consider the views of both filmmakers and spectators. In conclusion, if used properly, 3D post-conversion can be an effective tool for directors to create an immersive experience for their viewers. Before deciding to utilize this technique, it's crucial to consider the opinions of both filmmakers and spectators. At the same time, it can be a fantastic way to improve a movie's looks. James Cameron's The Way of Water utilizes 3D post-conversion to improve the underwater sequences and give spectators a more immersive experience. 3D post-conversion and the director's artistic vision will ultimately determine whether or not a film benefits from it. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below letting us know what you think. We love hearing from you.